Are you looking for a free alternative to DocuSign? Let's discover DocuSeal, a free open source e-signing platform. You simply upload your document, define the parties who will sign it, and drag and drop different types of fields with the help of the form builder. It includes text, date, drop down, images, files, and most importantly, initials and signatures. Once your form is ready, you can send it to be signed by all the parties via email, SMS, or direct link. Then you get notified when the final document is ready to be downloaded. Before diving into the platform overview, let's see the different options available for us to use it. We can use the DocuSeal Cloud version and create a free account on their website, or self-host it in your server by following the instruction on their GitHub repository. Together, we'll see how to install it with our platform, Elestio, to install DocuSeal on the cloud of your choice or your own server, while we take care of installation, backup, updates, and maintenance for you. Go to ls.io and hit Login. Click on Deploy my first service, then search for DocuSeal. Click on Select. Choose your cloud provider, region, and service plan based on your need. Then click on Next. Adjust your level of support. I will keep the free included one. And then hit Create Service. Once the installation is finished, you will receive an email. Follow the click here to get the password link. You arrive on LSTO admin dashboard UI. Copy the password into your clipboard and follow the admin UI like of your new instance. You should arrive on the presentation page of DocuSeal, but we already have our instance, so we can go to sign in. Enter your email address and paste the password from your clipboard, then sign in. And you're ready to go. You can upload your first document inside the document template section. I found a founder's agreement template online. We will be using this one. Once uploaded, we arrive on the form builder to edit everything that can be signed inside our document. But first, let's see the left section here. What we can do is add different documents. Let's add it a second time, for example. And it allows you to combine document, like the preview on macOS. Well, we combine two times the same document, so let's just get rid of it. But it's to show you that you can do it directly within it. You don't have to do it beforehand, but you can do it directly into DocuSeal. On the middle, you have the preview section and where you can drag and drop different elements for signing and filling the document. But first thing you want to do is to edit the different parties that will sign the document. So let's edit the first one and let's say it's us. So we will rename it. LSTO. Automatically you have a color attached to it. And let's add another one. So add second party. Let's rename it Founder B. And of course, you can add more. But for this example, just two is enough. You have many types of fields that you can drag and drop inside your document. First, let's go back to LSTO. So we will drag and drop a field that we have to fill. So let's say we want the effective date here. So we'll drag and drop a date, drag and drop near where we want, but we can fine tune the position, resize it, and also rename it. So effective date. Then automatically you will have the list of all the items here. We'll see later why it's important to have it here. And then we want founder's name and address. So we are two founders in the first one. Let's name it founder a name and the address. So it's also some text input. You can resize the box and founder address a. Then for the second, you drag and drop another text element. It will be founder b name, but you don't want to fill it yourself. You want the founder b to fill it. So you can click on the color here and assign it to founder b. Then same for the address, drag and drop another field. Here it was automatically assigned to LSTO because I'm on LSTO, but if I go here, I switch to Founder B and it will drag and drop the field with the right uh, party. You can rename it Founder B address. Then we can continue going through our document and put some values. It's not very important as it's an example. So it will be the company name here located at, it will be an address. So it's text again. Here you would add some text, but let's dive into the capital. Here we don't want to add some text, but a number. So we are sure the user fill some numbers. So let's say here the number, by the way, we should go back to LSTO. Capital amount. Let's head back to LSTO here. Again, you should add some text line elements here. They will be compensated. Let's say it's a number two about the amount of the compensation dispute resolution, some other fields, but we don't need to enter everything. And then we will want the signature of both founders. So we can drag and drop a text here. It will be the founder name. 
then will be founder B name. So you can switch to founder B and you can also change the type from here. So here the date, we can switch into a date. Here a date, but for founder B. And then we will want the signature below each column. Signature, it's here in this one. We can make a huge box and a second one just here for founder B. It's very simple to prepare the form to be filled for both parties. Let's say we want each party to have completely read the document and to assign it. So we'll add some initials on the bottom right of each page. So here, founder B, same here. So initials, founder B. Let's say just to show you that you have other controls that before the founders further agree that this amount is non-refundable, we'll add a checkbox. So we are sure both approve that statement here, even if they do when they sign the document. And earlier I mentioned that it's important that we have that list here. First, we can rename the field, but it's also important to have the elements in the correct order. So when they fill the document, we'll see it later, but you can push next and go to the next field automatically. It will scroll to the right section and you can just fill it quickly. So for example, the initial field here, it should be after the founder address. So you would move it here on the top. You will drag and drop both of them. I'm not sure it's in the exact place, but you have the main ID. If it's well done here, the signing process will be better. Once you are good with the document, you can click on save. We arrive on the document submissions. So let's send it to recipients to have some submission. We can either send it by email, by phone or by both. So they will have both options available. Or if you have a huge number of people who need to sign it, you can use an upload list and fill an Excel or CSV file. But the most common one is to use email. But we have a warning because we didn't configure SMTP on our DocuSeal instance. Let's follow the link to do it. Go to SMTP settings. Then if we go back to the mail we received at the very beginning, we had some information on how to set up SMTP for our software. Because when we deploy an instance with LSEO, it automatically generates an SMTP server. Let's copy the SMTP server address, paste it in the host. The port is 25. Then we have a sender address that is made by default. Let's go to send from email, paste the email address and click on save. Then if you made everything correctly, you will receive an email. SMTP has been configured. So you can check your email and see if you have it. Now we can head back to DocuSeal, open our document and send to recipients. We don't have the warning anymore. We can add the address for LSTO and for Founder B. So let's use my email address two times and add recipients. It will send us an email. Currently, we can see that we sent the document and that it is awaiting for the signature of the other party. I can also access directly to the link here to sign now or follow the link from the email I received. You are invited to submit a form and I follow the link. We arrive on that page where we can sign the document easily. So it automatically opened the first field we have to sign. So effective date. Let's click on set today. Founder's name. Let's enter mine. LSTO address, random address, then I can click on next. And it directly brings me to initials because it's the order of the form, but it's wrong because it's not the right initial that I put. That's why it's important to order your fields correctly. Instead, let's do it manually. Let's go at the right place, click here on initials. I can type my initials, then next. Here it is, capital amount. I can't write text. I need to enter amount, let's say 42,000. I agree, so I check this box. Then we agree that the compensation will be 42. What do we have? Other initials, so it will reuse them either if we draw or type it. Then let's head to the final signature. Because I'm LSTO, I'm founder A, I only have those fields to sign. Founder, Wasim, the date, Again, set today, or I can use the date picker here. And then I click on the signing box. I can upload my signature if I have it on my device. I can type it, or I can just draw directly in that box. So let's say WA underscore and click on next. 
because my fields are not ordered correctly, it's the checkbox one that will be responsible of the submit. Let's submit our document. Form has been completed. We can send a copy via email and download the form. If I open the downloaded form, you can see it's real text that has been written here in addition to the initials here and the signature here. If we head back to DocuSeal, we can see that one has been signed while the other is not yet. So let's sign the other one here. And this time it's asking us to fill the founder B columns. So founder B name, let's say tests. We will just fill it quickly. Initials. We need to check the checkbox here, the founder, the date and another signature and click on next. Once everything is good, click on submit and both parties filled the form and signed it. Now we have one entry that is completed and has been signed by both parties. We can download it, view it, but also add other recipients because for some forms, you need them to be signed by multiple entities and they are not just mean for single use. But if they are, you can archive it. You can also clone it and edit it for other modification around the lifespan of your form. You can also create a link and embed it directly inside your website if it's some part of a process you have on your website or application. Let's go back to the home, click on DocuSeal here, and you have all your document templates. You can switch into submissions view or your different templates, and from there, create new documents to sign. But currently, we are named root root, so let's edit our user profile. Click on the top initial RR and go to profile. Let's rename myself Wasim Admin. You can define your signature here, so you don't have to rewrite it or redraw it every time. Let's do it, W, save. And now every time I will sign a document with my account, I just will be able to select it automatically. Let's go to account. You can see company name is just a dash. You can rename it to Elestio because maybe you had noticed, but in the email, you can see it was only a dash. So it's writing the email as the company name. So first rename it, then your email will be sent with the right name. You can adjust your time zone for your signatures here and also the time format you prefer. If you go to personalization, you can edit the email template that are sent to every user. For example, signature request email here, you can see what was written when we received email, but you can configure it. Just keep the syntax for the variables. You can also use DocuSeal through the API and receive responses through webhooks. So it can be a process within your app and be fully automated while having the nice DocuSeal editor to create your forms, but also to see the different documents signed by your users. There are also premium features like SMS or notification reminders. You can define them here, but it requires a pro plan. So you can go to plans and subscribe to one. But all we saw together today was completely free. And there's a last nice feature. You can go on the top right Click on verify PDF and upload a signed PDF here to see if it's compliant. Let's click on it. Let's upload the document that we signed and we have signature valid, signed with trusted certificate, signed at what time and by what provider. As always, I recommend you to go to DocuSeal documentation to see some options and things you can do that I didn't cover in this video. Link in the description. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering DocuSeal with us and add it to the list of your open source software to run your business. If you find our content useful, please hit the like button to make our content more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe to not miss our upcoming videos. In the meantime, you can watch one of our existing platform overviews, like this one, here.